Okay, so welcome to a part two uh, of this series. Um, in this video, what we're going to be doing is making um, uh, making these links actually do something. So if we just go back to our list.php code, all we want to do is check up here if one of the links has been clicked, and then we're going to process it if it has. So what we're going to do is just bring this little bit down here and add an if statement to check if those two get variables that we're sending vote it, which is either up or down and the ID are set so we're going to do if is set get vote oops oh god learn to type right if get vote and get ID are both set we want to do something and that something is going to be using a function that we're about to define so I'm just going to call it here, but obviously it won't work because we haven't defined it yet. But what we're going to do is use the add product vote function. And this function is going to take two parameters. The first one is going to be the product ID, and the second one is going to be either the string up or the string down, depending on whether the user wants to vote up or down. So because that is what we are linking, like what we're providing for the vote variable, we can just use get vote. Um, it would probably be better uh, if you were to use like one or zero or true or false or something instead of up or down because comparing strings is slightly more expensive in terms of performance but to be honest it makes very little difference and this uh, makes the logic a little bit, easy, little bit easier to follow. So what we need to do next is go to um, our backend file and create this function. So I'm going to do that now just by going back to our backend file and coming down here and defining the function as before using the function keyword and the function was called add product vote and it took the product ID so product ID and the um, sort of vote so I'm just gonna call that vote so what we need to do here now uh, because we are using the product ID in a SQL query or well we will be in a minute we need to make sure it is an integer so we're just going to do product product ID equals int product ID and I explain a bit more about this in my SQL injection video so you should probably go and watch that if you haven't already um, but basically what this does is it will drop any non-numeric character from the product ID variable meaning that SQL injection is basically impossible um, the next thing we need to do is sort of either increment or decrement uh, the value depending on what they have voted. So one way we can do it, well, I'll just write out the SQL for increment first. So the SQL for increment would be, well, I'll define it in a variable, SQL equals. So to add one to a column in a table, you have to do update, because we're updating the table, we're changing a value that already exists. So update table name, which was products, and then you do set, and the columns you want to change. So the column we're changing is product votes. You can call it votes, not vote. Find out in a minute. And then you can't just do like plus one or equals plus one like you can with PHP. You have to do equals the column again. So you're recalling the value that is currently there. Product votes plus one. That's how you would add one to a value in a column. At the moment, that would add to every single uh, row. We only want to do that where the product ID is equal to the product ID that they've supplied. Well, we have supplied to the function in this case. Well, here, I should say. So running this case, running this SQL will increment the products, product votes column by one. But we don't always want to do that. If this string is the string up, we want to increment it. If it's not up, or if it's down, uh, we want to decrement it. So the way we're going to do that is by sort of modifying, well no, we're going to change, okay, we're going to, okay, if it, if the string is up, we are going to uh, use the plus here, and if it's um, down or anything else, we're going to use the negative here. So basically what we're doing is changing the word, like up or down, into the sort of operator plus or minus. And the way we're going to do that is just by doing vote, so we're, re we're reassigning the vote variable to itself, so we can do vote, and we're using the ternary operator vote and what we're going to be checking is if vote is equal to up and if vote is up we're going to set vote itself 
uh, equal to a plus and if it's not I'm going to set it to a minus and then we can use the vote variable here like so and what that will then do is use a plus here if they've specified up i.e. if they've clicked the up link and a minus here if they've clicked the down link um, so if you don't really follow that I do have a video on the ternary operator so under the logic title I believe so you could probably go and watch that so anyway the next thing we need to do is just run the query because at the moment we're just defining it as a variable the SQL is a variable so we just do mysql query SQL and that's it for that function that's basically that complete so now if we go back to our list page and just make sure it's saved uh, we should now be able to get some values to change unless I've made some typos so if we go back to our browser and just click the up link for advanced file server and go to our dat database in phpMyAdmin just hit browse again and I'm probably going to need to log in yep just log in and you can see that advanced file server now has product votes 1 uh, let's just try the down link on one of the other items so let's reduce the vote for data file so just hit down and reload phpMyAdmin again you can see that data file has now been set to minus one so that's basically the voting uh, system working and the very final thing we need to do is have these vo uh, have these order by the um, number of votes so to do that we're just going to modify the fetch um, products table sorry function um, to order the table as it returns the results it's not really right but whatever um, so just after the from part of the query we're going to add the mysql order by keyword and what this does is it sorts the results by this column so if the column you specify is numeric it will put the smallest values first um, well no you choose which way around it does it um, and if you use like a string value it will sort them alphabetically I think um, so what we're going to do is order by product votes and we're going to order descending DESC for descending uh, and this means that the biggest values will come first if you do ascending ASC the smallest values come first but we want the highest rated products at the top so if we reload the page now we should see uh, just remove this I don't want to vote again you should yeah we should see that the one that had minus one has been removed to the bottom because obviously that is smaller than one and the two that are zero were in the middle um, so now the fi very final thing we need to do is make sure that there is no sort of bias uh, if a uh, product is sort of old it will have a lot of votes um, so we need to now instead of ordering by the number of positive votes we need to order by the um, number of sort of votes per time so we can get the age of the product quite easily because um, we stored its created time and if we know the current time we can just take away the created time or added time I think I called it from the current time and that will give us the age of the product in seconds uh, and this order by uh, sort of part here does not have to be just a single column it can be an expression so instead of just ordering by product votes we can order by product votes divided by something and this something in the brackets is going to be the age of the product so um, there is a MySQL function called unix underscore timestamp oops, with brackets because it is a function um, that returns the current time so similar to PHP's native time function except it's sort of the MySQL equivalent so by using that function we can get the current timestamp and then we can take away the product added column and that will give us the age of the product in seconds so now what we're doing is ordering by the number of votes that sort of have happened per second. So if we save this uh, and go to our browser, just hitting reload, we'll show no change because all the products are uploaded, have been added at the same time. But if one of the products was like a lot older and it had loads and loads of votes, adding a new product and then voting it like once or twice would be able to push it above the old product. Um, so by ordering by votes per second it gives you sort of a more fair representation of what is popular so if I just for example just click up on this voted these have now both equal to one so they're equal 
hit up again, this now goes above because this has 2, this has 1, this has 0 and this has minus 1. Um, so yeah, now we're basically where we were at the start. One thing that I will add, just add is that um, at the moment like this user could just reload this page infinitely and add loads and loads of votes to the table. So hitting browse again, you know, well, when I said loads and loads, we now have five votes, whereas before we had like two. So it's not that many, but it's you don't want people to be able to do that. Um, to prevent people doing this accidentally, um, the one thing that I added to this tutorial, um, the code, uh, was in list.php, just redirecting here. So to redirect the user, we just do header, send the location header, that tells the, where, tells the browser where to go. Uh, and we just redirect to list.php and then after that we'll just use the die function because we don't need to run the rest of the script if the browser moves off um, we don't need to do this query again here and output the data because there's no point the browser's gone from this page we don't need to sort of process anything from it so now reloading the page again we'll vote but you can see that we get redirected back to list.php so um, now t well obviously people can just still massively click these buttons uh, and still cause a few problems, but I won't be covering how to prevent that in this series. I will be doing it either tomorrow or next week, um, basically at some point in the future. But we're going to be integrating this system with like the user system that I created um, in one of my previous videos, so um, you'll only be allowed to vote sort of once. So yeah, that's basically that. Um, I should also say that if you have like a large system that is just getting loads of votes, people abusing the system tend to get lost in sort of the averages that get made. So generally, they don't they can affect the actual votes, but they can't. Well, they can, but generally not for very long that they can affect the order of the items. So yeah, that's basically it. So thank you for watching, and hopefully this was useful, which I believe I think I say at like the end of every video. So yeah, good.